Thank you for joining me. I'm Mr. Ish. I hope everyone's having a great night. Let's do a good interesting calculation, a surface area of a solid calculation. That solid being a cup. You know cups can come in a variety of sizes and shapes, a variety of angles with regards to their beveled edges, but we're looking here at something of an average in terms of a cup. When you're thinking about the surface area of a solid calculation, there are two equations based on your axis of rotation or revolution you have with regards to dx and with regards to dy. This with regards to dx is, as you will see, the equation I'm laying it out for you, 2 pi integral a to b along your x-axis, your limits. You have a certain function over here and then you have here 1 plus dy over dx. This is in terms of a square dx. That's your one equation form. The other equation form, if you have a vertical line of rotation, do you will have 2 pi from c to d, vertical line of limits. You'll have a function here with regards to y. You can say here your equation is y equals to something. Here your equation is x equals to something. And then, of course, here you will have your 1 plus dx over dy. And all of this is square and then dy. Over here, you're seeing something like play in terms of a certain circumferential component. Here you're seeing something with regards to a thickness of a band. What does that mean? If supposedly you were looking at something like a sphere and you were to look at a certain slice over here, this certain slice has a certain circumference right here, Cer certain circumference. But this slice can also have a certain band. If you were to look at it with regards to from one side, let's just say from plus r to minus r, and you would calculate the circumference along with the thickness of these bands from the top to the bottom, you would cumulatively add them up, you'd get a surface area of the solid calculation. That's kind of what you're seeing over here. But all of this does not have to be too technical because you can look at everything here with regards to easy to understand mechanics. We're looking here with a surface of rotation or revolution will be our y-axis which means we'll be looking at this equation. How do we know what our equation is? Come up with an average representation of what a cup would be like. You have a dot over here, you have a dot over here. You'd rotate it, the line, and then you get a certain figure which looks like that. And then you look at the circumferential component all around, and that would represent a surface area. You can come up with arbitrary points, r comma zero, and then here we can say two r comma h. Your equation is what? You would look at the slope of this right here. You have r comma zero and then you have two r comma h. What's the slope? It's h over two r minus r and that's h over r. y is equal to h over r x plus b. What's your b, your y intercept? This, this line here would come and intercept somewhere over here. What is that value? Well, take any of these values, x and y. I'm taking this value right here. Zero is equal to h r over r plus b and then b is equal to minus h. Now I've got my equation. y is equal to h over rx minus h, which is my y-intercept minus h. This right here is an equation with regards to f of x. But if I have a rotational movement along a vertical axis, I need to convert this with regards to an x equals equation. My x equals equation will be y plus h, and then you'll flip this slope onto the other side, it'll become r over h. And you can even open this up, you'll have r y over h plus r. x is equal to r y over h plus r is your equation. What is that equation? It's this right over here. And now we have to determine the dx over dy and how will you do that? What will you look at? You look at this right here. You're looking at r y over h plus r. You're basically looking at, at it in that form. When you do it, this is a constant, it'll go away. The derivative of this y variable is r over h. So dx over dy is equal to r over h. I'm generalizing here only in terms of terminology, but I know now my dx over dy is equal to r over h. So everything becomes what? The surface area of the regards to your y variable is from lower limit as zero up to upper limit h. You're looking here at the y value, zero to h, zero to h. I have my function in regards to the y variable x equals equation, which is this r y over h plus r. That's what it is. Then I have this 1 plus dx over dy, which is this r over h, which is r square over h square dy. Everything has fallen into play. And that will take us to our completion. What is this completion going to be? It's going to be a template of what would represent an equation for a surface area of a cup of average dimension of average appearance. That's what it will represent. This area right here can easily be solved. It's not hard. 
When you solve this out here on the side, you'll have h squared plus r squared all over h squared. When you simplify it, you basically have h squared plus r squared and a root divided by h. All of this component right here can be brought out and attached with that 2 pi and it wouldn't be a bad idea to do it. So the surface area with regards to y is equal to 2 pi multiplied by that entire aspect h squared plus r squared and a root divided by h then you still have this 0 to h and this part right here which is r y over h plus r and then dy. We have over here a simple integral polynomial integration with respect to the y variable. When you do the antiderivative you get the r y squared over 2 h plus r y upper limit h lower limit zero which is meaningless you just bring in the h's you end up seeing r h square over 2 h plus r h when you simplify this you end up seeing r h over 2 plus r h which is like a half and a whole that gives you a 3 over 2 r h this 3 over 2 r h can be attached right here to the beginning part with all of this having been done so let's do that. What we end up seeing is surface area with respect to the y, you have 2 pi and then you have this h square plus r square in the root. You have this denominator h multiplying with that 3 over 2 r h. All of this will give you an equation form or a formula representing the surface area for something which looks like this, which could be a short cup or it could be a, a bowl, a bowl like structure having a good average appearance and dimension. The 2's cancel out, the H's cancel out, and what you end up seeing over here with regards to your end result is a 3 pi r, 3 pi r, and then you have the root h square plus r square. But if you account for only the external lateral surface area, you're skipping the part here on the bottom. The part here on the bottom would represent a circle in terms of a appearance, and that circle would definitely be part of your external surface area, having a area pi r square and you can just add that in right there so this in its entirety or totality gives you the surface area of a cup or a bowl like structure accounting for the lateral and accounting for the bottom and that right there shows you it all 3 pi r root a square plus r square plus pi r square and that brings us to the conclusion remember an average looking structure here average appearance you have a you have a total width here of the base to be 2r here on the top to be 4r 2r plus 2r is a 4r and the height to be h all you would need is basically the dimension of your r radius and your height you would plug those numbers in right here and you'd get a numerical item a value representing the total surface area of a cup or a ball we're emphasizing here more on the cup than the ball but you could account it for both and that right there is the end of this video thank you for watching